All right, folks, here we go. Uh, yet another philosopher. Yay. Um, so, yeah, we've looked at a bunch already, right? We've covered Hobbes, Locke, uh, Montesquieu, Rousseau, Voltaire, uh, and Edmund Burke. We're going to do Smith and Marx after. Uh, so we're actually going to switch up a bit, and we're going to do John Stuart Mill today. And I believe, actually, in this case, uh, Stuart is spelt wrong. And look at that. Through the magic of editing, now Stuart is spelt correctly. It's not like Stewie or Stuart on family guy right it's s-t-u-a-r-t -T. okay um so let's talk about j.s mill and by the way it's mill not mills k don't please don't call him mills right his name is john stuart mill j.s mill um or you can just refer to him as mill right like if you talk about the idea of the harm principle if you talk about the idea of utilitarianism then trust me if you mention mill right i know who you're talking about all right let's move forward here folks so John Stuart Mill. So guys, um, he is, uh, first of all, he is a classical liberal philosopher. He's in fact considered to be the father of classical liberalism because of his views. So he is a big deal. One of the most important philosophers uh, of the 19th century. Um, now, uh, one of the key things that he spoke about is this idea of utilitarianism or this idea of maximizing I'm gonna write this down okay maximize utility that's a U. okay we want to maximize utility that's what utilitarianism is all about now the question is Ms. Crosby what the heck is utility good question young student um, so utility um, basically it's trying to promote uh, social good, right? It's trying to promote social good. So you could make an argument from a utilitarian perspective that, you know, programs like welfare promote the social good because it helps the downtrodden in society. You could make an argument that laws are a function of utility because they tell people what they cannot do, hence they're supposed to act in a manner in which is expected of them, right? Um, so yeah, guys, and we'll, we'll look at utilitarianism in a little bit more detail as we keep going through this. But I just want to sort of plant that knowledge seed in your head. Now, he wrote a book called On Liberty. And yeah, this book is kind of a big deal, right? Liberty, again, of course, talking about freedom. So John Stuart Mill was this proponent, right? He was in support of this idea of individual freedom, which made him, again, this classical liberal philosopher. So let's keep going here. So what the heck is utilitarianism all about? So the focus of someone from a utilitarian perspective is to do what creates the most overall benefit to society, right? So John Stuart Mill said laws are just in that they maximize utility. So what government should do in society is whatever maximizes social utility, whatever creates the most good for the greatest number of people. So greater good is what we're focused on here. I apologize about that line. Not sure why this tablet does that. We'll just have to live with it. All right, so uh, John Stuart Mill says the role of the individual and also government, right? Everyone, you should do what creates the most good for the most people. And this is what government needs to consider, okay? The role of government is to maximize utility, to maximize the benefit to society. So its actions are correct in that they're doing that and they're incorrect in that they fail to do that. So yeah, there you go. There's a quote there. Actions are right in that they produce the most happiness and are wrong when they do the opposite. And unfortunately, guys, utilitarianism can be used to justify some terrible actions, right? Some very immoral things like Hitler looked at the so-called final solution to eliminate the Jew uh, on utilitarian grounds. He said, you know, if we kill 6 million people to save 75 million Germans from the scourge that is the Jew, then that is what we should be doing. That will create the most benefit because the Jews are sabotaging the economy. They're in control of other things and we need to rid them uh, and, you know, reclaim Germany for the Aryan people. Um, a husband who cheats on his wife 
right? That could be looked at. You know, you can make a utilitarian argument as to why you don't tell your wife that you cheated. Because think about this. I mean, how could someone rationalize this from a utilitarian perspective? Well, for instance, you could make the argument that if I tell my wife that, you know, uh, I was an infidel, right? I committed an act of adultery. Well, then she's going to divorce you. And what happens to children who are the products of divorce? Well, typically they live with the mother, but the mother uh, usually isn't the greater income earner in a lot of relationships. And as a result, the kids are going to suffer. Uh, they're going to have uh, issues thinking that their father and mother don't love them, abandonment, all these different things. So um, from a utilitarian perspective, you could make the argument that, in fact, you don't tell the wife because it's for the greater good. The children won't suffer, right? Um so yeah, that's utilitarianism. Now also guys, again, we can look at legal codes, right? Like the laws that all people in society have to abide by. You could argue that those are uh, under the principles of utilitarianism, right? Property rights, you could argue is a utilitarian thing. Uh, legal rights are a utilitarian thing. The right to participate in democracy, that's a utilitarian thing because we don't want a few people making the decisions for us. We want the most people, right, like in a democracy, to make the decisions for us. So utilitarianism is a pretty cool philosophy. And you can look it up in more detail, right, online. Go to YouTube, wherever, and check it out. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of mentioned, right, the Holocaust, uh, the Nazis justified it under utilitarian grounds, which is a morally bankrupt argument, uh, but under utilitarian grounds, it can actually make sense, which is horrifying, right? Um, so uh, in Mill's book uh, on liberty, he also discusses something called the harm principle. And this is a really interesting idea. And I'll be honest, I try to live my life according to to this harm principle idea. So Mill says that society or authority can only intervene, let me just move this down, in the life of an individual if they're going to harm, physically harm somebody else. So does that mean, Mr. Crosby, that according to John Stuart Mill, if I'm an individual and I'm of a rational sound mind, that if I want to snort six pounds of cocaine on a Friday night that I can do that as long as my actions don't harm anybody else. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mill actually, and guys, think about what this means, right? This means this is centered around freedom, right? I should be allowed to do what I want to do insofar as my actions don't harm anyone else. And Mill said something like, my actions are correct insofar as my fist does not extend to the end of your nose. And that is my fist right there, right? I can do whatever I want, flail my arms around and do destructive things to myself as long as in my destruction of myself, I don't actually physically harm you. Whoa. That's crazy, right? That seems kind of crazy. So yeah, self-harm is not enough of a reason for the state to intervene in the life of an individual, would say John Stuart Mill. So again, guys, I try to live my life based upon this harm principle. And I believe that you as an individual should be allowed to do what you want to do as long as your actions don't harm anybody else. Seems like a simple way to live, right? And that's a very libertarian way to live. I really try to make sure that, you know, even if I don't like something, it's not enough for me to say that you can't do it, right? I can only say you can't do it when and only when your actions harm somebody else. All right, let's continue here with our friend John Stuart Mill. Um, so yeah, so harm to one's own person does not justify the state interfering in the free will of an individual. Free will. What a crazy idea, right? What a crazy idea. Um, so based on his harm principle, guys, Mill's often considered to be the father of liberalism. And in this case, guys, liberalism is focused on freedom, right? So the focus is on personal freedoms, freedom of the individual, which is why this makes John Stuart Mill this classical liberal philosopher. So, uh, for example, guys, let's kind of compare the difference here and talk about when the state can justifiably, according to Mill, uh, intervene in the actions of another person. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the government of Canada, now in the Canadian Criminal Code, has criminalized the idea of you being in a canoe uh, and drinking a beer, right? 
uh, and they treat it as driving under the influence. So while you're out on the lake, right, in your beautiful canoe, it's pretty, it's a very Canadian thing to do to crack a beer open and have, you know, a Molson or a Labatt's or some other Canadian beer, right? Um, and the government has now said that that is uh, not acceptable and that if you are caught with open liquor in a canoe, that is considered driving under the influence, which is crazy. Um, also, obviously illegal, is the idea of drinking and driving in a car. Well, I mean, think about a canoe. I'm not sure how fast you can paddle a canoe. This is me paddling a canoe. Watch this, right? I'm paddling away from you. So anyways, I'm not sure how fast you can paddle a canoe to actually harm someone else. But if it's you and you only in that canoe, and let's say you're inebriated, you're drunk, you're not wearing a life jacket. Well, I mean, if that canoe tips over and you drown, I mean, so be it, right? That action is on you. However, in the second scenario here where you are drinking and driving a car, well, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but cars are like four, three, four thousand pound missiles that can go really darn fast. And when a car collides with someone's soft tissue, um, it causes a heck of a lot of damage. So, um, I would argue that under the harm principle, right, being by yourself in a canoe with open liquor and possibly bringing harm to you and you only would be something that Mill would say is okay, although in the benevolence of our government, they have criminalized it. Uh, and alternatively, drinking and driving or being inebriated, being drunk legally behind the wheel of a car, well, that's not okay because you have an incredible amount of potential to harm somebody else. We could also look at this, guys, in terms of um, masking right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? And coronavirus, I mean, is wearing something like this, right? There's my mask, right? Put it on my face. Look at me. Um, is not wearing a mask a violation of the harm principle? And you could make a very strong argument that, in fact, it is because while you talk, while you exhale, droplets from your body leave your body. And they, if you're symptomatic or asymptomatic and don't present uh, any sort of issues yet, you could be infecting the immediate area with coronavirus. And then someone else walking by could touch that, inadvertently rub their eye. And now they have introduced COVID-19 to their body. So does that violate the harm principle? And I would argue that perhaps... Um, local authorities, provincial governments, federal governments have made masking mandatory because of that, right? Because of the potential to harm other people without even knowing it, right? Without even knowing it. All right. So as I mentioned, both, right? Canoeing with open liquor or driving a car with open liquor, right? They're both considered driving under the influence. And, you know, maybe that's too much state interference. Okay. Um, so Mill's view on government uh, he said government is necessary to protect individual rights. And he said the justice system, right, that judicial branch of government that we talked about when we looked at our friend Montesquieu, the justice system must exist to punish those who harm others, right? Again, not if you try to harm yourself, right, but for those who commit harm to other people. And you could extend this to like property harm and stuff like that as well. But those who violate the harm principle then they enter into the justice system. So theft is a violation of a person's property that causes that person mental harm, physical harm, possibly, right? Um, then Mill says it is the role of government to step in and do something about it. So that is uh, our friend John Stuart Mill. So basically, uh, as this classical liberal, he wanted government to just leave people alone as long as they're not harming anybody else and again the role of government is to maximize utility um yeah he's a juggernaut of political thought here in social 30 um harm principle is very important when it comes to what the role of government is in society basically guys mill would take the argument and again stewart is spelled wrong there uh john stewart mill would take the argument that it is not government's job to dictate what people do how they act who they love uh what they consume what drugs they uh, put into their body uh, as long as their actions are not damaging anybody else, right? Um, so should government leave us alone to help maximize our freedom or 
should government be involved in many aspects of our life and protect us from ourselves? And guys, um, these questions here, how you answer this kind of tells us whether you're more sort of a classical liberal or a modern liberal. And we'll get to modern liberalism here uh, in a bit in the course. So I'll give you an example, guys. In New York City, um, New York City passed a bylaw because they're worried about um, obesity, right? They passed a, uh, a bylaw uh, about the size of drink cups in New York City. It couldn't be over 500 milliliters or 16 ounces, I believe it is, uh, in the United States because, you know, they're the only country in the world that doesn't use the metric system. Anyways, um, in their benevolence, the New York government, the city of New York government decided that, you know what, um, we're going after everybody, right? And it doesn't matter if you are um, fit or not, right? You're going to get swept up in this ban. And basically, they criminalized, it's kind of silly, right? They criminalized or made it illegal uh, for people to go to a, a restaurant and get a drink larger than... Um, you know, 500 milliliters. And is that right? Is that wrong? Is that denying freedom to everyone for the sins of a few, right? Not everyone's obese. However, obesity is recognized as a health problem, right? Um, so is this the right thing or the wrong thing? I guess we'll see. I'll actually put up that article for you guys. Uh, and uh, I'll leave a little discussion um, aspect that you can chime in on. You know, is this government going too far? Uh, is this government acting in the... Um, best interests of all people? Does this diminish freedom? Uh, should freedom be diminished because people don't have the capacity to make good decisions for themselves? Whew, complicated, complicated, right? So yeah, so in New York City, they banned soda containers over two cups or 500 mils. Uh, why? Because obesity is a problem and the state has stepped in. Now, um, with the uh, up above this video, I will have put up um, a copy of this PowerPoint, click on this video. Click on this video, okay? Please watch it. Guys, these kinds of examples are the kinds of examples that depending upon your political stance, you can use to justify or to rip apart arguments about state control of people, right? So yeah, is it necessary or does it diminish our freedom? Okay, that's John Stuart Mill. Like I said, um, uh, I will put a little module underneath here where I put up the article and I'll allow you to chime in on what you think about the role of the state. In the school that I used to teach at, and I'll just give you a little story here quickly. Uh, in the school I used to teach at, Archbishop Jordan, uh, before I moved here uh, to St. Isidore, um, they created a nutrition policy because, again, the state, right, uh, representing, uh, you know, the uh, school district decided that, you know, students can't make proper choices. As a result, we're going to deny all people the right to choose what they want to eat. So they got rid of what was deemed as unhealthy food uh, in our cafeteria and in the vending machines. And basically, they would mandate what you eat, right? Is that the right thing or is that denying individual choice? Is this casting a very wide net and punishing all people for the sins of the relative few? Because again, not all people are out of shape. Not all people are obese, right? And as a result, um, does everyone have to suffer for the sins of the few? Okay, um, that's John Stuart Mill, guys. No utilitarianism, right? And know what utility is all about. And also know this harm principle idea. The harm principle is such a great argument, right? And again, that's how I try to live my life. Okay, anyways, um, that is that, guys. Peace. Watch that video, right, uh, in the PowerPoint that I put up. Um, and comment, please, uh, on the article that I'm going to put up about limiting drink cup sizes in New York City. Kind of ridiculous, uh, or maybe not. It depends upon whether you think government is benevolent or not, whether it's a good thing or not. Okay, peace. Love you guys as always. Stay cool, keep learning, and we'll talk to you later, okay?